welcome back to Sketch to See. In this episode, I'm going to discuss the ever important design brief or the owner's specification. What is it? How did we come up with ours for us? And why is it so important? Why did we choose to do it the way that we did? First of all, what is the design brief? The design brief is a statement that fundamentally identifies the goals and objectives that you hope to achieve with your yacht. Basically, it's your mission statement. There are quite a few different ways you can approach this. You can be either extremely broad or heavily detailed. But in general, the design brief should answer a few basic questions. One, what do you want to do with your yacht? If you've watched the other Sketch to See episodes, you've already answered this question. Please refer back to your notes from episode two. Question number two, what functional elements of the yacht are important to you? And for this one, please refer to episode number six, the sailing triangle of compromise. Third, what are the cruising or use requirements of your vessel? Again, you've already identified this back if you've taken notes during episode two. The next item you need to consider when creating your design brief is how much detail do you want to go into? I have heard of design briefs for 100 foot plus monohull sloops that have been one sentence long. I've also heard of a few pages being written for a 50 foot catamaran. Obviously, these are both of the extremes. So how do you decide on what you want to do? A great way to address this is to ask yourself, what do you want your designer or builder to get out of your design brief? As contrary as it sounds, we actually engineered our design brief to invoke questions both from the naval architect and the manufacturer. The goal of this was to create a conversation with people that had much more experience both in design and in use of these vessels. We had a great idea in the beginning, but invoking this conversation and having it with these other professionals within the industry would only help fill in the blanks and some of the questions that we had. This was our design brief. This preliminary specification is to describe the construction and the outfit of an XX foot luxury carbon performance sailing catamaran. The intended purpose of this yacht is to provide a luxury, comfortable, well-mannered sailing experience for 10 guests and up to four crew. This experience is to include long range, short-handed, offshore capabilities for extended periods of time. So yes, loaded with just enough information to invoke those questions we were talking about earlier. Some of the obvious questions would be, what is your definition of long range or short-handed? What is an extended period of time for you? This was intentional. As the naval architects went through the design process and asked us these questions, we had time to critically think about and discuss what we actually wanted to achieve with our yacht. During these discussions, we identified elements that best suited our needs and were able to incorporate them within our vessel. As I noted earlier, if you haven't already taken the time to watch episode two, it might be worth going back and doing that again. I created this episode to help you narrow down what you hope to achieve with your yacht. It's very important to note that every single element that you identify in your design brief will have a ripple effect on every aspect of your yacht. For a very quick example, we specified a vessel with long range capabilities. What determines the range of a vessel? The most obvious answer is fuel storage capacity. You obviously need enough fuel on your vessel to go your designated distance. A less obvious element, but is still tied in with your range, is refrigeration and freezer capacity. You must think that that same fuel that's giving you your range, like your distance, may also be needed to power the generators to power all your refrigeration. And the more you're running your generators, or if you're using your air conditioning at night, and you have no solar being provided via the sun, obviously your range is going to be diminished, which means you need to accommodate for that in additional fuel storage capacity. So you need to take all of these items into consideration when designing a realistic range for your boat. Everything needs to be factored in, especially additional energy for vital systems on your vessel. Just on the topic of refrigeration, a small miss here can have devastating consequences to your future sailing requirements. Let's just think about it for a second critically. Couple time aboard with yacht capacity. For argument's sake and to keep it short, we're gonna assume extended period of time is only two weeks. 
filled to capacity for us is 10 guests and four crew. That's three meals a day times 14 people at sea for 14 days. That totals 588 meal portions. If you're doing your calculations with eight people requiring three meals a day for two weeks, that's only 336 meals. That's drastically different than 588 meals. Given that difference, now that you sized your refrigeration for only an eight person capacity, you're gonna come up short and you're never gonna be able to achieve your design briefs extended cruising time if your boat's at full capacity while on charter. This is why it's really important to have those conversations and create those questions when coming up with your design brief. Will the vessel be full to capacity while on charter for extended periods of time? Or is it simply gonna be personal use and family and friends on board? I'm really not exaggerating the need to be mindful of the knock-on effect that every decision that you make has on every aspect of your vessel. So as you move forward and begin to work with a naval architect or a manufacturer about the design of your vessel, be sure to take the time and be mindful about creating your design brief or mission statement. It can really be anything that you want it to be. In my opinion, the most important part of it is to have it create the questions to start the conversations to make you, the naval architect and the manufacturer, all think critically about all aspects of the use of the vessel. Taking your time to be thorough at this stage will best serve everybody moving forward in the design process. Thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting, please jump back and watch some of our other content. As always, follow along with us on our various social media platforms being Facebook and Instagram. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below or reach out to me directly at sketch2c at gmail.com. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you guys again soon.